This video is about RC filters. It corresponds to section 11.1 .1 and 11.2 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. Now, a filter is not just an impedance. A filter is a three-terminal device. You can think of it as a box, which has got an input and an output, and it has to have some sort of reference for that input and output to be with respect to. So it's a three terminal device, input voltage, output voltage, and it's not just two things. So you can't just have a resistor and a capacitor, put them in series, that's not a filter. That would just be an impedance. But we can do something fancy here in that we can make this three terminal device um, out of a voltage divider. So, if we take a resistor and a capacitor, have an input port and an output port, this voltage divider will act as a filter. Now, what sort of filter is it? Well, we need to do a little bit of math, but we can get um, kind of an intuitive idea for what's going to happen by looking at, well, what's going to happen at really, really low frequencies, say DC. Well, at DC, the capacitor is just an open circuit. So it's as if it wasn't there. The input is just going to be the output. There's a bit of resistance between them, but um, there's nothing to cause a voltage drop. OK, so at DC, this has basically got a gain of 1. The output is going to be the same as the input. What happens if we go to an extremely high frequency? Well, at a very high frequency, this capacitor is going to be basically a short circuit. So the output is basically going to be connected to ground. Output's going to be zero. That means that uh, we can think of this as a low pass filter. That is to say, low frequencies will get go through essentially unchanged. High frequencies will be attenuated. All right. That's a rough, intuitive idea, but it's a really good way to remember whether something's a low-pass or high-pass filter. Is just look at what happens at zero and at infinity, because those are easy to think about, and it'll give you an idea of sort of what's going to have to happen in between. All right, let's now do the math for this thing. This is just a voltage divider. We've got an impedance on the top, that's R, and an impedance down here, which is the impedance that corresponds to the capacitor C. So the voltage divider equation is going to give us V out over V in. It's just the impedance on the bottom divided by the sum of the impedances. Okay. Well, what is the impedance of a capacitor? Well, we have that as 1 over J omega C. kind of an ugly looking formula, but if we multiply top and bottom by J omega C, we get something fairly simple. 1 over 1 plus J omega RC. That's the gain of the filter. And notice it's a function of omega. And there's also another number here, RC, and RC is a time constant. Resistance times capacitance. Ohms times farads is seconds. So the properties of this filter are determined by what this RC time constant is. If omega times RC is very small, much less than 1, then this term pretty much disappears and we get that the gain is 1. If omega times RC is very large, then this 1 pretty much disappears and we get 1 over J omega RC. So what we're expecting to get as the gain, or the magnitude of the gain, is at low frequencies it's going to be 1, and at high frequencies it's going to be 1 over omega RC. Again, I'm looking at just the magnitude, so this is the magnitude of the gain. 
and I'm plotting this on a log log scale with frequency down here and magnitude of gain on a log scale here. Okay, um, things get a little bit tricky sort of in this range where those two lines would come together. Incidentally, where those lines would meet is called the corner frequency. And the corner frequency is when omega is equal to 1 over RC, or frequency is 1 over 2 pi RC. That's the corner frequency. All right, let's take a look at what would happen if we switched resistor and capacitor. So now we're going to have capacitor between V in and V out and a resistor. And I'm not going to draw this one to ground. I'm going to say it's to an arbitrary DC voltage reference. Okay, we can again do the analysis of what happens at zero, what happens at infinity. At very low frequencies, capacitor is basically an open circuit, and V out is just V ref. So no, no change at all due to the input. If we have uh, very high frequencies, then this is basically a short circuit, and V out is equal to V in. So what we expect is that at very high frequencies, we're going to have a gain of 1. And at low frequencies, we're going to have attenuation. So this is a high pass filter. And again, we can do the math using the voltage divider equation, the same as before. So we're going to have that uh, V out minus V ref, that's the voltage, uh, that is actually the output here, we're uh, comparing it to VREF. Take that over VN, and it's going to be, well, or I should actually VN minus VREF. Both of these voltages are reference to whatever is on the VREF. Remember when we had the three nodes of the filter, the third node was the reference voltage, what things were with, with respect to. And for the, for the low pass filter, I made that ground. Here, I'm making it an arbitrary VREF. OK, so this is our voltage divider formula. We've got R on the bottom and R plus ZC for the total. And again, we can replace the ZC with 1 over j omega c. And again, we can multiply top and bottom by j omega c to get that this is j omega rc over uh, 1 plus j omega rc. And that is the gain of this high pass filter. OK, let's check to see whether it works in terms of the values we know that it ought to have at zero and infinity. Well, what happens at zero? Well, the j omega rc's both become zero. And so we get zero over one, that's zero. Yeah. Very small. In fact, if we just get small without getting all the way to zero, then the one plus j omega rc is basically just one. And so we get that the overall behavior is j omega rc, so that this uh, low frequency curve here, the gain is essentially omega rc. The magnitude of the gain is that. All right, and what happens as we go to infinity? Well, as we go to infinity, the 1 disappears again. And we have j omega rc over j omega rc, so we get gain of 1 at high frequency. And the corner frequency is again when uh, omega equals 1 over rc, or frequency equals 1 over 2 pi rc. All right, so 
that all looks very nice, but maybe it would be a little more concrete if we tried doing this with a specific example. And so what I've done is to use GNU plot to use the voltage divider equations and the formulas for um, impedance and just plot out two filters. Now these two filters have the same resistor and capacitor. 3.3 kilo ohm resistor and a 470 nanofarad capacitor. But I've configured one as a low pass filter and one as a high pass filter. Now with that particular value of R and C did the calculations and the corner frequency turns out to be 102.6 Hertz. Okay, so the low pass filter you can see is basically constant gain of one until you get to within you know, maybe a factor of three of the corner frequency. And then it's got this kind of rounded curve and then it drops down a nice straight line here one decade per decade. And that is exactly the behavior uh, that we would expect. The high pass filter, just kind of a left right reversal here. At high frequencies the gain is one and at very low frequencies the gain is a nice one decade per decade and in between have a little bit of a rounding. In fact we can compute exactly what that rounding is at the corner frequency because um, at the corner frequency we've got that omega RC equals 1. So the gain at the corner, we often abbreviate the corner frequency as F sub C, is going to be um, J over 1 plus J for the high pass and uh, 1 over 1 plus J for the low pass. And if you just take the magnitude of either of these, the magnitude of either of these is going to be um, square root of 2 over 2. And you can get that from Pythagoras' theorem because what you're looking at is 1 and j. So it's 1 over square root 2 for the magnitude of this, this thing on the bottom. Sorry, square root of 2 for the thing on the bottom, 1 over square root of 2 for the overall gain. Okay, um, that's probably enough on the basics of um, RC filters. We'll do a little bit more with them in subsequent videos.